Hello, hello, listeners of Listen for a Change. Uh, my name is Marielle. I'm so stoked to host tonight um, for the Story Hour. Um, I am super excited because I'm going to be hosting a friend of mine who is currently in Mexico. And he is going to be talking a little bit about... Um, the coronavirus situation there in Mexico and how it has affected his business. Um, who am I? I am the events coordinator, I suppose, for, for Lizard for a Change, slash just like overall volunteer, slash Ty's biggest fan and groupie, um, and have been involved with the organization since uh, 2016, 2017, and I'm excited to... Uh, rejoin after a little little break uh, when I was traveling abroad, which is actually when I met my friend. Hey, there. hey everyone! So excited to see so many friends. Hey, Linz. Uh Hey, Ty. Puerto Dreams is following us too, which is actually uh, my friend's um, business, uh, the hostel that he works at. Hi, how's it going? Um, let's see if Eder has joined us. So just waiting for him a little bit, or let's see if he's gonna join us from the Puerto Dreams account. Hmm. Hey, Jimmy, good to see you. Um, so, what to do with the awkward silence? Um, hmm, I know Ty has left us a lot of uh, tips on what to do, but they have all gone away in my head. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep reading out who's here. Hey Dar, I see you're here. He's waiting on FaceTime. Hmm, uh, oh, I see him now. Okay, Eder, I see you. I'm gonna invite you now. Be getting an invitation. I'm so excited to see you. Hey, Nick. Uh, <laughs> it's happening. So it looks like Hello. we're connecting. <gasps> Yay! Oh, no. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? How's it going? I'm, I'm so good. good. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to see your face. It's been so long. Yeah, that's right. Last time you were here, uh, I was not actually here, right? I was on a road trip, so I, I didn't have time to see you. But... I was so pissed. I was asking every. I was like, hey, everyone's here, everyone's <laughs> here. And Heather is at a wedding, and I was like, well, forget him. And that yeah. actually, so it's funny. Uh, before I introduce you, um, just going to repeat, um, this is my friend. Well, I guess I'm introducing you now. This is my friend, Eder. Um, he's in Mexico right now. Um, Eder, Eder and I met, um, when I was working or volunteering at his hostel, uh, back in September, last September now. Yeah. Um, and I stayed there for a month and had an incredible time, of course, as everyone does when they're there. Um, <laughs> And then I uh, loved it so much because I made so many great friends. Last March. Um, and that was actually the very last time I was able to travel at all because once I got back from Mexico, um, the shelter in place and quarantine started for us here in California. Immediately after I left. How's the going? Are we okay? Hey. Yeah. All right. The delay on the transmission, but I, I can follow you. Yeah, I have you. I have you. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited that we get to reunite at least through here, even if it's not in person. Um, but, yeah, tell us a little bit about who you are, Eder. Um, and a little bit about how you got started with uh, the hostels. Okay. So, hi, everyone. First of all, thank you very much to invite me to this amazing experience. This is my first time that I'm doing that kind of things. 
and uh, I'm so happy to be Hannes. I'm excited to be these kind of things. And well, let's just start a little bit of the story of Puerto Dreams. So it started around four, like four years and a half, like pretty much the story. Uh, so I was working uh, for the oil and gas industry at that time. So then uh, I got a promotion uh, to go to Colombia in South America. Actually, I was working for Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. And then uh, I decided to there based in Bogota. Uh, there is a friend that everyone knows, is Carlos. And he suddenly arrived there, and also Ismael, who also is from there. So pretty much like we started the project when we were in Colombia. We were based in Bogota. So at that time, we all, we were like kind of working for the oil and gas industry. Just Carlos was like a traveling, like, like kind of a uh, backpacker, but you know, like just uh, <laughs> like having some kind of experience for himself. But I was working for the oil and gas industry, it's mine as well. And then uh, uh, I had some like a plan B because I was born in Puerto Comida in Mexico. And all my life, I was like uh, thinking I would be back in Puerto Escamilla. And I knew that I was working for the oil and gas industry, but I was like sure that I was just waiting for the correct time to go back to Puerto Escamilla. So to be honest, I didn't have any idea to put in a business like a hostel. I, my, my idea just was kind of like going back to Puerto. You know Puerto Escondido, mm -hmm. for those who doesn't know Puerto Escondido, it's an amazing place, it's a surf town, pretty much like that. So it's a beautiful vibe, so in paradise, even if we're in quarantine right here, so we still enjoy the place because we can still go into the beach and, you know, like enjoy the, the weather and every, everything here. So pretty much in, in Bogotá, and then we decide to back to Mexico for the Scandida and hey, am I okay I've got you back the internet it went a little bit um, but in summary I think so that's super crazy I had always known that you were an engineer but I didn't realize that you were working in the oil and gas industry um, and that coming back to Puerto Escondido was more just like because you wanted to come home um, and you wanted yeah. to start this thing. And so for those that um, are just joining, joining us again now, I'm um, the owner of Puerto Dreams. Um, when you met with your friends, Carlos and Ismael, Isma. Uh, who are the three that I actually also know and worked with when I was there. And the three of you kind of were this like center of force um, that would lead team meetings every Monday, would give updates about the direction of Puerto, Escondi uh, Puerto Dreams and what your, um, I guess, what your dreams were for Puerto Dreams. So... Now... Just wanted to know, like, what those dreams were at the time. What exciting plans you all had before the coronavirus hit Mexico? Sorry, there is a delay in the transmission, so I couldn't get the 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 the, the answer the, the question. Can you ask? No, it's okay. No, me too. It's happening on this side as well. Um, yeah. So, um, before the coronavirus hit Mexico. Yeah. Did you all have any big, exciting plans for okay. Puerto Dreams? Yeah, actually, uh, we had an amazing, like, project because we were, like, uh, I think that we reached a point that we were growing maybe so fast that we opened one hostel, then a second hostel, then actually a third hostel in Cicatella, which is in the tourist site. Uh, yeah. And then uh, we were basically opening a, a coffee shop just next to Puerto Dreams, you know? <laughs> so the cafeteria was basically ready to open it. Uh, and also the entertainment side. So we were like uh, 
basically every weekend we were doing some events yeah. uh, the bar, which is actually upstairs. <laughs> I'm back. I'm I'm living in in Puerto Rico no, again. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I decided to come back here. You know, like I was kind of sad to be like uh, living near right here, but you know, like yeah. every the place is was closed, it's still closed. But I was kind of sad to to come here. You know, like to taking care of the plants and the garden and to see this place with no life. So I decided with my friends to come back here. So every day we are here. So we are at least having some. I'll oh, share some good times, some good memories in Crete. So, yeah. Yeah, so I actually, when I was visiting in March, I had actually seen some of the development of these projects that you had mm -hmm. in place. I had seen, it was so incredible to see how much had changed, even in the six months between when I left in September to March. You had yes. completely redone that reception area in La Escondida, which is like the Puerto Dream second hostel. Um, and right. it had completely transformed from a reception space to a cafe. And it was so cool. I remember me and the girls, Elisa, uh, Sita, all the new girls, Lena, we yeah. were all there hanging out yeah. on the couches, <laughs> lounging. When that was usually us, you know, just sitting on the floor, looking up at like in air conditioning, but it became a cafe, a cafeteria, which was really cool. Um, and so it sounds like, so now that the coronavirus has come to, to I mean, now, this, now that this pandemic has hit, how have these plans changed? What's happening now with Puerto Ooh. Dream, La Escondida, all of these plans? Uh, yeah, that's like a... Uh the sad side, you know, like after like uh, the coronavirus and everything, actually I was in a road trip. I was uh, in Tulum when this uh, thing is still happening and uh, then we decided to come back as soon as we could and then we started like uh, making decisions about what to do in order to first of all like uh, understand the situation and to see uh, how we can first like help our staff you know, like our people. So that was like the first thing that we start to think about, like, okay, let's start like a closing, but let's start like a helping our staff. Like usually people who start with us uh, like four years ago. So we start like a doing some kind of a meetings to, to, to try to have like a clear communication about what was happening out there. And also what, what were our like uh, kind of a decision about what Puerto Ricans will do in the time that this thing happened. So mm -hmm. it definitely affects like all our like uh, planning that we had, like starting for the cafeteria and then all the events that we have. So we have some kind of joint ventures uh, with bars in, in the tourist side in Cicatella. So we start with uh, bars like Barfly, like uh, Sativa, you know, the joint forces. So pretty much like uh, we started like uh, we having we were used to have like uh, the the warming up here at the rooftop bar and then mm -hmm. we have to move to the Cicatella to have like a better nightlife. Things like um, start to cancel, you know, like uh, and it was like a just beginning to to the to the worst. Enough. So it definitely affects our like operation. So we start like uh, putting like everyone out there and to making sure that first like uh for the health of our people so to taking care of our people so that was our first decision you know yeah and that's so important especially when i mean hospitality is the bottom line for for the hostel and what you all are about and a great thing about puerto dreams and like you were mentioning before puerto escondido is this beautiful area where people come to enjoy themselves, to go to the beach, to surf. And Puerto Dreams, the hostel, and what you guys have all done, you've done a really great job of incorporating so many fun activities, salsa night, um, you know, pre-games at the, at the rooftop bar uh, with so many other businesses in Puerto Escondido. And so I feel like the hostel was very central to a lot of just the life, not just the nightlife, but just the normal life 
uh, there in in Puerto Escondido. So I can imagine that, and it's great that you were taking care of your people first, knowing that, you know, they will be affected as well. So do you know, so what's going on now as far, I know that every country is kind of dealing with it in a different way. How has Mexico responded? And I guess maybe Oaxaca or even Puerto Escondido, how has it, what's, what, what's the next step or where are you all at right now with how to move forward? Yeah, uh, the way to move forward, so I think the country is doing well. Maybe it's not like the best in the world, but I think that uh, the decision is like kind of a strategy that uh, they are using what we have, the resources that we, that we have. So we are the country that we don't have too much like technology. That's right. So the, we are kind of uh, using like a way to indicate that let's try to isolate everyone, let's try to respect the rules. And I think in a general way that we are doing well because most of the people is respecting, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. even here, like we try to respect. So we try to use like uh, our like social distance. So we try to avoid having to have some kind of events. Imagine for us as a hostel, so we create like a concept which the, the value, you know, was the social life. So right. can you imagine like how this affects, you know, like now, so let's just like the way that they say, you know, since now, so you have to respect these kind of rules. So in Mexico, we used to call it like toque de queda, like pretty much like after 10 p.m. So no one can be out there. So that's, mm. that's kind of hard for everyone. And I think that in, in general, the people is respecting well. So the country is doing well. Like, okay, that's my personal like uh, opinion. Of course, right. I don't understand. But I can see, like, as an engineer, I can tell you the numbers, the statistics, and my personal impression, like, taking into account my closest friends, my family, they are, like, doing well. You know, like, uh, uh, the people is, like, uh, respecting in a way, but also the other side is that people need needs to, to work. That's the, other, that's the other thing, you know? Uh, so people is working in, in a way that they can because they need some incomes to, to, to eat basically so but in general I, I, I can I can see and I can tell you that the people is doing well so what is Good. the next step so mm -hmm. I think that uh, step by step like let's say the, the industry and the activity is, is going back I can't say that going back to the rea to the reality but mm -hmm. they are like the uh, normal like, uh, you know like uh, understanding every, every, every time more and more and they are also like not aware about this virus or whatever it is you know right yeah, yeah. what how do you think um puerto dreams will be able to reopen up again when when mexico says okay we can reopen up what do you think how do you think you all will be able to do that that's a great question so of course we will be back that's for sure. We hope so. <laughs> but uh, we know uh, that that will be different. You know, this this will be another chapter. This will be another story. So all that happened before it was the past. So for us, so we are working uh, and pretty much like meetings every day with Carlos, with this one, like to try to understand and to try to create another concept. That's what we are working on right now, to create another concept, like an and of course, Puerto Dreams. Uh, as I told everyone, like a Puerto Dreams start as a hostel, and now it's a brand. We create a brand. Uh, I knew, like, uh, and this is something that I told today to Carlos and Ismael, that I knew that Puerto Dreams start as a hostel, but I know that Puerto Dreams will finish as something that we don't really know. So maybe we will create some uh, kind of new technology or maybe we will create something. I can tell you right now, we are working uh, um, in, we are building some water wells. Uh, we have some projects in Tierra Blanca, which is a beach like uh, 20, 30 minutes from here. And we just started 
project like building a water well in order to have some water and to start like uh, watering and you know like to start to create another concept in places that uh, are mm -hmm. like important but we think that once the activity or the people start like a traveling again they will try to look for places where they can be like as isolated but we we will try to create another kind of experience for them. So that's what we are working right now. So I can tell you, like, we are busy working <laughs> and creating. <laughs> I believe you. No, I think for the people out there who didn't have or haven't had the opportunity to visit Puerto Dreams or Puerto Escondido, um, from my experience, it's actually, it, it, like Eder says, Puerto Dreams is a brand. Um, and they have really created something more than a hostel. They have created an experience for uh, their guests that goes far beyond just being a nightlife place or a place to stay. But people actually go there to socialize and, you know, learn more about the community and go to hidden beaches every Tuesday to listen to new music that your DJs have created. Um, and so I have full comp. I always saw you all thinking there's something new here. There's something new there. This is a new person we can connect with. Um, so I have a lot of respect for you, Isma and Carlos, for all of all of what you have created so far. Well. <laughs> yeah, of well. course. See, of course. Um, so I see we have a lot of people, a lot of your fans. I think a lot of Puerto Dreams followers on the line um so i wanted to give <laughs> anyone a chance to you know ask a question and también se puede hacerlo en español si quieres um yeah, y, yeah. yeah so just um until then until people start asking questions wanted to ask you personally um what have you been what kind of lessons have you learned from this crisis, whether it's about business or about your personal life? Uh, what kind of lessons have you learned? Okay. Uh, no, to be honest, it's a big lesson uh, in a way that um, I I came for, for I came from that side, you know, from the capitalism where I was working for the oil and gas industry where mm -hmm. like I have like a great salary in a, in a way that I can spend in whatever I wanted but now that I had the time to think, the time to create the time to build again I just realized that um, there are like a more simple things that are really important in life you know? uh, there are more like essential things that are really important in life I can tell you that even today, maybe what the busiest day from from the month, because uh, there is a place that we used to call Aroma, you know, like the place where. Uh, yeah. So I was working full day there, in the garden in there. So I just arrived like an hour ago. I just arrived and I was working the whole day with the sun, and I really enjoy just taking care of the plants. I really enjoy to to, to have some chat with people that I was used to work, but because of the, the, the daily day, you know, I, I didn't have the chance again. So I just realized also that as we, as Mexicans, we say, that no poner los, los huevos de gallina en, en un solo canasto, you know, like don't put all the eggs in the same place. And one back. You know? mm -hmm. That's what that, that we did, you know, like uh, we were focused just on tourism. And actually we knew that there was a, there were a day that I was talking with Carlos and I told him, man, so imagine if something happened that uh, of the world or like all those channels like cancel or they disappear, like imagine we are depending on those like channels or everything. So imagine if something happened out there and, and we don't have something like a income, you know? Of course, like it was just like a question that comes to my mind and I told him, but I didn't really know at that time, you know, like I didn't like think that this coronavirus will come. So the, the big like uh, lesson learned is like, don't put 
all the eggs in the same place, you know? Like, you really need to think in the plan, in the plan B, C, D, or, you know, like, put in, like, a, or other projects don't just depend on something, which is tourism. Imagine for us, and I think that the tourism in all the world, it affects, you know, like, in a way that as front line, this is the most affected segment or area, you know, the people who, who is like dependent from all the travelers from comes to visit, you know, like we, I, for us, we had two months that we don't have incomes at all. So imagine mm. how it is for us and I can imagine for all those people, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good point. We have the same saying too in English, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And I think what exactly. you all have done is is right. Like I think being able to be connected in different ways with Puerto Escondido through tourism, but also through, you know, reconnecting yourself with nature, um, being thinking about hospitality in different ways has been really smart. And I'm so sorry to hear that, yeah, it's been two months where you haven't been able to work or gain any kind of income, but I think, I think the hospitality industry, the tourism industry across the world is feeling this as well. So is there anything that you would say that people like me, travelers who love travelers, what can we do to help the tourism industry or you know, local businesses or hospitality? What would you recommend that folks do to, to continue to stimulate the tourism sector from home? <laughs> If possible, uh, I think that if if you traveled in the past and you are like uh, like most of the people really think about to travel again, just think like to to support that local people, to support like communities that those like let's say like a small business are like the, the most affected, you know. Because at the end of the day, like those like a big chains, like those hotels, chains, they, 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 they have some support to still, you know. But for those like a small business, like uh, small hotels or like a hostels, it is very hard, you know. Like even for Escondido, uh, I think that maybe like 30 hostels we used to have in the town, I think like maybe 50% of them will disappear because it's very hard to, to really like support these kind of things, you know? People could just like uh, pay for the rent and for everything. So I can tell you, you just support that kind of people, you know? Once once uh, it is allowed to come back so to, to support them, to, to really believe in them, to tune them, and to think in sustainability projects, you know? To think that the future is something more simple. The future is more like to focus on essential things, you know? So that's what we're doing right now, just to focus like uh, in more in sustainability projects, to, to think more in like uh, new experience, like a real experience that we used to, to have. And actually I can see uh, some people who is connected, like uh, I can see Ana Maria, thank you for joining us. She's the one, she's the responsible to have the salsa nice, you know. And, oh, yeah. and I'm here, like really, uh, they have some kind of, uh, when we were, like people like you, that they were volunteering, you know, like we will still working for volunteers, because at the end of the day, like, like the volunteers, they ask value. The, 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 the real travelers, that people who, who used to have some exploration in the world, those are the way, those are the ones can still contribute. So <laughs> my advice or my recommendation is like support like those like a small business and mm -hmm. think more about sustainability projects. Yeah, and I think it's a good point as well, like supporting boutique ho hotels and hostels also gives you, uh, like what you're saying, it helps you reconnect with the essentials. And I think in traveling, one of the essential things is connecting with the people from those places. And small, ho small, host uh, small hotels and hostels are the perfect way to do that. So when we're able to travel again, I'm also on board with you to, to, to support uh, those kinds of businesses because you just get more value out of it. 
um, from your trip. Um, we do have one question here. Um, Ty yeah. asks, what is one Oaxacan dish you would recommend to people who have never been to Oaxaca? I can tell you, you know, I was uh, Oaxaca as a, as a state, like Mexico has 32 states and there are like uh, maybe three places mm -hmm. where it's my, my top, the ones I always recommend is Oaxaca, it is Tapas and Guanajuato maybe. So for me, Oaxaca is like mm -hmm. a, the essential place. The one can offer you the real Mexican experience. The ones even in the city, uh, you can and you can find the best foods in Mexico. It is people who really want to share the food, like a real authentic food, very cheap as well. And then mm -hmm. just going down to, to the coast, you can find like a paradise as for us. So for us, Canada is, as I told you before, it's like a small town, like a surf town, where the people and the energy here I can tell you that this is an amazing place where there is something like you cannot really see, but you can really feel. That's mm -hmm. why I uh, created uh, Leading by Carlos and Ismael, the, the, the project called it The Sunset Feelings, which was mm -hmm. an experience where we were trying to disconnect from the world and try to connect and contemplate that sunset. Something very simple that we forgot, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, so you can. You can find in Oaxaca pretty much magic. So that's I agree. <laughs> I agree. You can find, yeah, you can find everything from really great uh, cheap street food, like you said, great seafood, and then also just great experiences on the beach. Um, yeah. So, Eder, my final question for you, and I thank you so much for all of the time. I mean, it's so I could talk to you all day about this just because I miss you all too. But my final question for you is when was, and this is something that we ask all of our, um, all our guests on, on our, on our show. Um, when was the last time that you changed your mind about something? Uh, uh, I think that after this worldwide coronavirus, it definitely changed my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. It was like a way that it breaks my mind and, and makes me realize that you need to focus more on, on, the, on the things that are really important in life, as I told you. Your mm -hmm. family, I really... I still don't have the, the opportunity to go to visit my, my parents. They are living in but I used to call them. I used to have more conversation with my parents than before. I used to to enjoy uh, a simple, you know, like a food with my parents. To put it back, to put it out yeah. on the phone, you know, like just to, I, I want to I wanna listen to you. I want to I wanna share this moment with you. Uh, connected connected with the nature, those are the, the things that for me are really in life. So after this, I can tell you that uh, my mind changed in a way that I am more focused in the essential things in life. And the essential mm -hmm. things in life are like those, those are small things, like, like this plant, you know, like <laughs> this plant, like those things that, that I used to ignore before, you know, like, but now, like, uh, I had to move care of the plants, not just from the hostel, but also from the Escondida Garden, but also mm -hmm. from another in Aruma, you know, like, it definitely changed my mind in that way, you know, like a focus and to put it more attention in that small things. So, yeah. I think we can all agree that this time has allowed us to reflect a little bit more on what matters and hopefully people can take your lead and start focusing on things like, you know, real people connections, taking care of the environment and nature and doing things a little bit more sustainably. Um, so Eber, let me see any, this is the last call for questions. Anyone um, 
this is your last chance to really talk to somebody in the thick of things in a different country. Um, so let's just give people maybe 30 more seconds. Um, yeah, sure. Think of anything. And otherwise, um, in the meantime, I guess, tell me, tell me what you've been up to. I know you're thinking about the future, but tell me, uh, like, aside from your business, what are things, have you picked up anything new these days? Are you learning something new? Have you, have you tried new hobbies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, are, there are two things. Uh, perros y plantas. Those are some plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There next to me is some other... more dogs. <laughs> Aww. So uh, Cash, as you know, is the other dog, and, and she is with with Alex, with my brother, and she's like uh, doing exercise. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we're getting some questions. Really, uh, Sorry. I'll take care of them. Like. Well, I am doing my uh, uh, like the trim board. Yeah. yeah and then someone wants... especially for the plants, you know. So. Someone wants to know what's going on with the surf world there right now. Are you still surfing? Okay, that's a great question. Yeah, uh, for the surf community, I can tell you that those guys, the Puerto Boys guys, they are doing amazing. That's an amazing community. They uh, they are helping the community a lot. They created like a crowdfunding and they are like uh, helping uh, the communities around Puerto Bonita. And the people is still surfing just in the swell. Like just when there are like a good waves, they're like a they're doing wow. in a respected way. Like they just go in the morning, like six in the morning at eight thirty, they are out, and they are trying to yeah. respect that. Uh, in our case, yeah, I can tell you that time to time we are used to go to to those like uh, beautiful places, you know, like those isolated beaches, and we are used to surf time to time. The surf are still here. Like for those who doesn't know, for Escondido is one of the best spots to surf in the world, and. And, and and the machine is just, is just turning on, you know, like the good waves just start. So for the people who is, most of the people like who is living in Puerto Escondido is because of the surf and because of the vibe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so surf are, surf is here. Surfers are like uh, surfing time to time with, with very respectful rules. And also, and most important, they are uh, supporting the communities. So yeah. That's great to hear. So any last words for your fans out there, Eder? Anything else, any last things that you want to say before we wrap it up? Well, yes, uh, thank you for the people who join us. And I can tell you that Puerto Rins, uh is here. Puerto Rins will be back uh, as a new concept. We are really working on that. And we are really excited to offer and to see all the people again to offer like at all like a new experience so i'm excited to see more people in here i'm really uh willing to to see most of my people most of my friends in here again so thank you very much and uh thank you very much to the people who is supporting learning me you know like uh, as i always said uh puerto Rico is not other puerto Rico. Carlos, Puerto Rico, it's not Ismael, it's not Cherko, it's all of us. It's all the people like you that were like helping us as well. With that, people who had us to spread for, uh, uh, to spread it for the things. So, you know, Puerto Rico's like a store at a hostel. Puerto Rico right now is like a, a brand in a way that will show the world like what we, what we are creating, what is our like a new offer in a way that. Uh, uh, we are creating a sustainability project. Like uh, we believe in organic, organic food, we believe in the alternative energy. So we are creating some things more like on that side. So it's just for that people who are like uh, thinking about what is the future for the dreams. This for the dreams will be back as a 
new concept. Puerto Dreams will offer like new and better experiences, and Puerto Dreams is more light than ever. I we're so excited to be able to all come together again. I wanted to show you I had my little dreams on my water bottle, and so I've been thinking about you all every day. <laughs> Um, but for those who are just joining us, I see some of my friends, Lena, Kathy. Um, for those who are just joining us, uh, don't worry. This um, this Instagram live, this is the first time Ella and I have ever done something like this. But you can see it again on this handle. Listen for a change handle um, in case you missed it and see and hear everything that Ella had to share with us tonight. And so thank you so much, Ella. It was so good to see you. We miss you. And we can't wait to see you again soon. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.